Hi everyone. We're going to now look at the Click PLC counters. And they're very similar to the timers in which you, when you try to determine what you need, you use a timing chart. But what we're going to do is continue where we left off with the timers and our PLC. And as you can see, we're still connected. And we're going to add a counter underneath this circuitry here. So if you click the, the rung that we're going to add in front of and you right click it, we will set insert cursor before or rung before cursor. And that places a, um, a line just before our end statement. Now we can put our counter in and we'll use the following address. We'll use X3 and what we'll use is one of the system clock bit flags. We'll use the one second clock. And so we use the address picker. And under the address picker, there's a memory area called SC. And the SC area uh, shows us a lot of the specialty flags that are located in the PLC. And we would want the one second, which is SC7. So we'll just double click that. And we'll hit OK. And so we'll just call that one up. Uh, SC7 and what we'll do is we'll add our counter right here and now on our counter we have our count number which will be um, CT1 for counter 1 and you'll notice that as soon as we enter it correctly our flag will go to green indicating that it's the correct number our set value we can actually use a register but in this case here we're going to use a actual value of 10. So we want the value of 10, it's an integer, it just comes up. You will see our current value is in CTD1 and our completion bit is a CT1. On the right hand side, we can change the count type. We have an up count, we have a down count, and we have a count up and down. So it just determines how many inputs we have. So for the count up, we'll have an input that counts up to the set value and then turn the output on. A count down will go from the set value down to zero to turn it on. And an up down, we'll use two inputs, one to count up to the set, set point and turn on, or it decrements from the current value and goes down. So in our case here, we're just going to use an up count and we'll hit OK. And then we have a reset, and that reset button, we'll just use the uh, X4, which is the following, or the, the next one in line. So you hit under here, we can hit F2. It will automatically come up with a contact for us. And that's going to be X4. We'll hit OK. And now we'll have to join this together. So we go up here to our join, or our line. It gives you a little uh, tutorial saying, you know, you start it, you point, uh, to where you want to go and you just click the result. So we'll say OK and we just want to go over here. Okay. And then we'll hit Escape because we have our line joint. That didn't quite do it. And then we just hit Escape and we're out of it. So now, now this is our program. And what we want to do is take that output to the actual second output in our PLC. So again, we're going to add a one more rung. Insert rung before cursor. We will call up the actual contact bit of the counter, which is CT1. And our output will be Y2. All right, so that's the our program. And now what we want to do is we want to transfer this into the PLC. We will do this online. So we'll go to the right project into PLC. It comes up, it compiles it down here, gives us no error message. Then it prompts us for uh, what we actually want to do. It tells us how big the file sizes are, etc. And down here, edit, uh, run time edit. So that means that our PLC will not be stopping and we will be uh, putting the program in. So we'll say OK. 
Again, it gives you a warning. We're going to we're going to proceed the runtime edit. So you see, it's very quick at getting the information in. We'll then close that uh, reference, saying that it's already done that. And now here's our program. You can see my one second clock pulse pulsing there. And what you'll notice on the left hand side, we have a status monitor. Our status monitor, we can uh, double click it. It will cancel the readings here, your status. If we click it again or double click it again, it'll bring them all back again. So like before, if we call up our data view, and there's our two bits we had prior. And what we'll do is we will uh, add X3 and we'll add X4. And on X3 we need to override that bit and we will turn it on. And then we'll rewrite the values. And again it comes up, says we're going to write multiple values, we'll say yes. And what you'll see now is every time that we get a pulse from our one second clock, it'll go up until we each 10, and which turn the output turns on. Now, and then what we'll do is we will um, turn our reset on. We'll turn our, our input off. And we'll write the values. There we go. So, turn our value back on again. And we start counting down once again. Now, the last thing we, we should, I also want to show you is on our address picker, when we went to the CTD area, which is your, your counter area, you'll notice over here is that we have... Uh, Initial value is disabled and a retentive means yes. In order to change it so that our counter is not memory retentive, that means when we go from program to run mode, um, it, it maintains currently the value. We can say no, and when we say no, we can say the counter resets back to zero um, every time um, we have a power failure, or we can actually set that initial value if we want to set it to 5, we can set it to 5. And similarly, um, it's the same thing with the timer. So if we go to the TD area, okay, you got our initial value, or we can make uh, timers now memory retentive, as opposed to the non-memory retentive when they first start out. So that's it for today. Um, and just before you go, can you do us a favor? Help other people find this information by giving this video a thumbs up. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and our website, and that will keep you up to date with all of our latest uh, content. Now, our website is located at www.accautomation.ca. Thanks for watching.